Hey woodworkers, welcome back. I wanted to talk to you about a couple of design things uh, for building this mock-up for the chair and uh, a couple of structural things to start. I wanted to highlight what I'm doing down here for the joinery and arguably more importantly back here. Uh, because this thing is going to support body weight and uh, you're going to really need to, to live in this thing and test this out, uh, I, I do need to build this or overbuild it in ways that kind of make sense to support my weight. So, and more importantly, anybody else's weight who you asked to sit on this. Okay. <laughs> uh, when I was a student a million years ago, we were building chairs and I, everybody wanted to sit in everybody else's chairs and check them out and everybody wanted the feedback and poor Johnny um, decided to check out my chair and that was the last chair that um, he ever sat in of a student's anyway. Uh, I think mine had just gotten so much use that it started to fail and just crushed under poor Johnny. And uh, I don't think he was very happy with me after that. But Johnny, if you're watching, it was not intentional and I still feel bad to this day. Uh, okay, so what you can't see in here is that I do have dowels going through here, or at least one dowel, I can't remember. But the dowel is going to be the lion's share of what's supporting the weight. Uh, if it were just a dowel in there, then eventually this thing would start to wiggle loose and then this front leg would become separated from the back leg and yeah, calamity then starts to ensue. Uh, pocket screws then are my temporary holding or clamping mechanism to hold that into place. As you can see on the other side there, there we are. Um, so I have those pocket screws on both sides and that kind of equally balances how this is being held. I had to do it in that format here and here because of um, uh, it would not have been an easy job for me to drive fasteners this way and expect them to hold. It's just not strong enough, especially on on this back piece. Sorry, on this back piece, the more pressure that you're exerting with your back, it's really going to stress this thing out much like it would in an actual chair. Uh, and so this joinery is going to be a good litmus test as far as well where the uh, the weak points or the structural failures are going to be but different process and dealing with this front apron here underneath the seat pocket screws are an easy way to kind of get this thing started once i've got it leveled so this height on both sides make measured and marked so I've done that and then landing some fasteners this way to really hold it into place. And again, there's no glue anywhere in this thing. I, I need to be able to make modifications. Um, this is probably a better example of, yeah, the differences of joinery here. So within this, I'm only going through one and a half inches of material here for this two by or whatever I milled it down to. So with that, I stand a really good chance of driving a fastener in here. And again, if we're dealing with a three inch or greater screw, that's going to be plenty, especially if you, if you double those up. So have two screws in there. Um, and that's great. Uh, you'll notice that there's some detailing stuff here. This is chipped out. This is not aligned very well. All of that is totally cool because mock-ups again are for ergonomics and then I can dial in the aesthetics after the fact but um, I just want to get this thing close so you'll see with this back piece here I was running out of material and I think this is a two by material that I started with but it was not wide enough to pick up on the end of this curve so what I did was on this curve carving out this way I saved this piece and then I glued it back on here it would have been a straight edge from the back edge of what we're looking at and then the front edge of the part that was cut off. So that all went back there and no, I didn't need to do it down there. So I would never do that on the final piece, but for what we're talking about, this is totally acceptable. All right, so from this, I'm getting a lot of information about the footprint of where these legs terminate, which I kind of like. I am also seeing the, the edge or the side view of what these legs look like. 
So I kind of am fond of the legs, but I'm hating that arm. Uh, this is an old sculptor truck here, kind of looking at this, zeroing out that part we don't like. Um, but yeah, there, I just put the arms on a couple days ago, and the only thing that's holding the arm in, I have one of these uh, fasteners in there, which I've talked about in the earlier video. Um, but I was planning on driving something into the back here and then possibly connecting all the way across of the back. And then that will also support the back. But it's strong enough that I don't need any of those things. And if I don't need it, I'm not going to do it. The reason that I, I'm taking pause with this and not adding something to the back is because, and that was kind of what my original sketches were calling for because I thought it looked cool from this vantage point. And actually, more specifically from that vantage point there, I thought having a piece running all the way across, whoops, all the way across, whoops, that way, would have been fantastic. But it just feels really hideous and really clunky. And I realized that these things are very, very square and something that also is fairly curvy. So I have thoughts of introducing some type of a curve in there. And I think I'm going to try that out before I go to the next step. But uh, I like the idea of introducing some elements of curvature onto this design for the arms because that's kind of the vocabulary that's happening elsewhere. Um, but I'm just not sure. It's not quite right yet. And this is part of the process with the mock-ups. Once I've uh, been able to sit in this and I kind of like where things are at for my body, then um, as far as comfort goes, uh, then I'm going to be able to tweak and adjust everything else as I need to. So I think that one's going to go in a different direction. I'm not quite sure what, but uh, in the front here, I like how much extension there is. It's very easy to wrap your hands around and kind of help yourself in and out. Um, and then the other elements here, location of the back, these other things, I'm getting good information. I want to set the camera up and then kind of talk about that. So again, nothing polished. Nothing pretty necessarily, just trying to get ergonomics dialed in first. All right, so with this, so grabbing here, the, my fingertips don't grab onto the leg. I'm pretty happy with where all this is at. With building these, I encourage you to sit in this as long as you possibly can. I've been reading here. Um, I had uh, a caffeinated beverage earlier, uh, answering emails. Uh, this has made my shop a lot more comfortable, which is great, but there's something about it that it just doesn't feel quite right. And I think what it is, is the back where it's at feels like it's pushing me a little bit too far forward. And the only reason I say that is because I think the back of my thighs, it just feels like I run out of material here. And there's always this, this kind of sweet spot as far as the extension of where the seat is. If it goes out too far, it hits the back of your calves, and then that feels like you can't ever sit back further. If there's people with shorter legs, that's going to stop them from sitting all the way back to feel this back uh, or really severely slouch. So, um, so this one feels like it's awfully close, but I, I feel like I want just a little bit more extension out here. So there's two ways of dealing with this. Uh, number one, I have some scrap material floating around and I can sit this in and then see where that engages with the back of my knees. And so far that feels much better. It's more comfortable for sure and it encourages me if it's more comfortable it obviously is going to encourage me to stay in this longer which is kind of the point of this style of chair. So I think I like where this is going. I don't know by adding that additional three quarters of an inch though, that that's done anything for the comfort of my legs. So I need to be sensitive that when I do slide something like this in, it also has an effect on the rest of the proportions. With adding that in, these armrests feel a little bit slow, like I have to search for them, which is not great. So I think the height where I had the original seat is better. This extension is helpful for me to gauge what the back of my legs feel when I'm sitting in this chair, which is important. 
But I think what I've identified with this is this is obviously incredibly flat. And with my models, which you probably can't see, but there's a little sweep to the back that's going to happen right here on the crest rail. So I want to try that out as a next step at the mock-up phase, just to see what a little sweep would do here. And then um, I can either put curves on the backside of this vertically and have that compress or form to that shape, just so I know. Um, I'm gonna tweak that a little bit. All right, so another example or, or um, piece of advice is sometimes when you're sitting in the chair, of your mock-up, it's going to feel awkward, like something about the angle is off. Um, there's a lot of great information about, generally speaking, what chairs should be, where the angles are, what parts, so the heights of this compared to the seat height, um, the width of the front of the chair versus the back, all of this stuff is, this information is available. But Having said all of that, once you put it together, you might feel like something's just a little bit off. And um, I think one thing happens a lot where people feel like they're kind of being pushed forward. Even though there's a, there's a fair amount of decline here on this seat, uh, sometimes people just feel like they're sliding out of it. So an easy way to solve that would be, there's a scrap board here and then testing out modifying the angle a little bit. So I've now put this thing back. I'm now being engaged in the back a little bit more. Uh, this is a really helpful way without touching a drill or a driver to know exactly just one little tweak without committing to doing anything else. Same conversation applies in this application though, if my legs are now feeling awkward. I'll have another board here to bring me back in place with where I should be now at the new angle. So keeping these, all of this in mind when you make these things is super critical. Um, you really can't rush it. And if you haven't made a mock-up of your chair before you start designing and build, I'm sorry, before you start building your design, uh, you have to. This is such an important step and we're still in the cheap phase of building a chair. If you were to skip this, go right to your your ebony or purple hearts or whatever chair material you're going to make without testing it out it's going to be something you're going to be living with for a long time or worse your clients are going to be living with so uh, okay hopefully those little trips trips and tricks were helpful um really not much to it it should be a lot of fun uh a drill and a miter saw and imagination that's kind of all you need for chairs all right thanks everyone